welcome in to today's podcast right here at the Cog Hill 40. Peaches wouldn't let Nugget into the canned ham for this episode, so here's Jason and Brooke. Johnny Carson didn't have nothing on these folks. What is going on, Cog Squad? This is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast, and we are coming at you from our canned ham at the lovely Cog Hill 40. We did miss an episode, so I want you guys to know that. Uh, this oh, gosh. This isn't episode 100, is it? No, this is actually 99. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, we did miss an episode. The, the last four or five days may be some of the busiest for me. Uh, I wasn't here for two days straight. Um, you had a migraine. Mm-hmm. so I don't we, even um, know what day that was. That was Sunday. Yes. Yeah. And I wasn't here Friday or Saturday, so it's uh it's been crazy. I can't even remember where you were Friday. We went to the uh Oh that's right. The storm shelter place. Neither sometime. one of us were Neither here. I was us. thinking oh, yeah. like you weren't here. <laughs> Both of us was not here Friday. <laughs> yeah. Saturday I went to Petals from the Past to one, pick up the rest of our fruit trees. All our fruit trees are here. All our apple trees, all our pear trees, our persimmons. So we'll get into that later in this podcast. I think that'll be something good to talk about. You think? Yeah. And I went to a rose class. And y'all, my rose confidence is went from negative two to about 90. Well, when you first told me that you had signed up for a rose class, mm-hmm. I... <laughs> thought to myself hmm, what's he going to grow roses for i thought to myself as if we don't have enough going on for you to try to learn about roses when our brains are kind of packed but you know i'm thinking of like now look i just turned this thing off you gotta do it on your phone no i always do it on my watch (laughs) okay so um, I was thinking that you, you had lost your marbles, yeah. thinking that you were going to learn about roses. Mm-hmm. But when you got back, you were so excited and so thrilled that I felt like it was the best thing since sliced bread because I roses was. are a good thing. And we've always both been intimidated by them, except for those that you dig up off the side of the road that yeah. you can't kill. Yes. Yeah, I've. So intimidated by roses. Uh, rose dumb is what I call myself. Just, and I think what happened with me was, is you buy these roses, say like from Walmart or something. And it's just, it's not, they're not good roses to have in your garden. <laughs> yeah. Well, you set that straight. Um, and that's the facts. I mean, yeah. most people that make those purchases are impulse buys. Yes. They didn't go in intention of buying a rose. They just see it and it's in bloom and they think, oh, I'll stick this in my yard. Mm -hmm. And you know how that turns out. But when you have knowledge, then you make a plan and you build your area first and then you add your roses. And you're right about that. And then there's just so, I learned so much. I learned about the shrub type rose and you got a climber and then you got a rambler. You know, I always thought climbers were climbers, and but you can plant a rambler instead of a climber. And it's uh, just, I learned so much, so, so much. I learned how to prune them. And I learned that you cannot make a mistake pruning. You cannot, especially if you prune in February. That's for us, though. We're in zone eight in Alabama. Mm. If you prune in February, you can't make a mistake. You can't you can't mess it up. But in force, that's in Alabama. That's, that's in Alabama. not everywhere. Yeah. But I learned how to prune. I learned when to prune. Uh, you prune in February. Then if you got a repeat bloomer that repeats three more times, or repeats three times, then you can prune it again and prune it by a third, and then prune it again. So I learned so much, so so much about roses that it's it's one of the best classes i've been to even though i'm so passionate about all our fruit trees i've gone to two actually three because i went to one several years ago uh fruit tree classes um the rose one really got me excited and so much so that i signed up for the perennial class in april 
Well, I saw something come through this morning that said you have made a purchase from Petals from the Past, and it was simply that you were signing up for a free yeah, class. You, gotta, you have to register for their classes. Uh, because well, that's the only way to know how many people will be there. They're limited. They're limited to space. And get this. So our Piper's mom, Katie, mm-hmm. is a flower farmer. Right. And so I've been picking her brain. I know she's about tired of me, but <laughs> I've been picking her brain like crazy. And she told me that they were going to get into perennials this year for the flower farm. Hmm. And I said, guess what? Petals is having a perennial class the first of April. And she was like, oh, my gracious. So did she sign up? She did. I told well, her, good. I said, you better sign up because it'll yep. fill up fast. And That's she right. said, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> well, good for her. <laughs> yes. Because knowledge is power when it comes to anything. Mm-hmm. And basically, if you don't know what you're doing in advance, then your outcome is not going to be successful. Right. So um, while we're always learning yes. and growing, yes. you told me that any repeat bloomer mm-hmm. rose mm-hmm. needs to be pruned after it blooms. Yes. Well, I, I was like, my wheels were turning because I really can only tell you one variety of rose and that's your new dawn rose we had a new dawn rose and we had it it's at one several of the easiest locations. ones it's one of the easiest ones to grow but it is a repeat bloomer it is mm-hmm. and so mom had one planted on a what you call it a pergola yeah pergola style trellis on the front of her house on the front of her mm-hmm. house and then we had one planted at the entrance where you went in the chicken coop mm-hmm. at the old farm we did and we actually had two. We had one planted on each side, and they kind of met in yeah. the middle. But you know that one on the left side never did anything. It never really. did anything. Mm-hmm. But I think it's too much shade. So um, we would cut it back because it would grow so unruly that yes. you had no choice but to cut mm-hmm. it back. And we didn't really know what we were Mm-mm. doing. No idea. We didn't know what time to cut it back. We just cut it back when it got in our way. That's right. Basically. That's right. And no matter when we pruned it or what we did to it, every year it was it was beautiful. It was. <laughs> But what I did not know is that if we had cut it back Mm -hmm. by a third, Mm -hmm. every time it bloomed, Mm -hmm. we would have continuously had flowers all summer. With repeat bloomers, you'll get that show repeated, but if you don't don't cut it, then you don't get that spectacular show. We had a lot of green. Yeah. And it would bush out and Mm -hmm. be pretty but it only bloomed one time Mm -hmm. and lo and behold if we had just known to cut it back by a third Mm -hmm. each time it bloomed then we would have had lush green plus flowers all summer long and that's after your main cutting in february in february you want to cut at least half of its new growth so that's one thing else i learned and this is for repeat bloomers um so i'm wondering if if roses that are repeat bloomers are they all labeled as repeat Repeat bloomers, or is there another well, term? Well, it depends on where you buy them from. Um, I went to Petals, and I got a handout with all the roses that they try to carry, and it is a mess of them. And it breaks it down. It tells you the variety, or it tells you the name, the color, the variety, if it's a climber, if it's a rambler, if it's a shrub. And it also tells you if it's fragrant or not. On the tag on their roses themselves? It, or maybe on a not sheet? on the tag, on a sheet. Okay. And it also tell, told you if it was a repeat bloom or not. So, it, really great detail. But I say this if you went to Petals for the Past and wanted to buy roses, they would tell you all of that. Well, they any would, question. but not everybody's capable of getting in their car and driving well, to Petals for the Past. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. So, I was wondering I don't if know. there was another term that a repeat bloomer I, could no, be called. Repeat, repeat bloomers is usually what they're called. So, if you were buying from a reputable mm-hmm. nursery or garden center or even online, mm-hmm. you could probably search by repeat bloomer. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could. And it's shocking how many are repeat bloomers. There are spring bloomers. And this is what I found out about the spring bloomers. The spring bloomers really put on a show because they're going to bloom that one time. So when you when you prune it in February, in March, it's going to just shoot up and then it's going to explode. So I guess it would be labeled as just a spring bloomer. Probably. Huh. Yep. And then once it's done, of course it's done. But what, when it, would when you it prune puts it after it's show, done to get rid of that? 
Um, you know, I, he didn't get into that. Uh, he talked about pruning it because I guess there wouldn't be any reason to prune it back a third because yeah. you, basically, you're not encouraging any growth. You're not encouraging or, any growth. So you would wait till that probably that next year when it was time to do the big prune. Correct, unless huh. you, unless it was unruly or yeah. something like that. Um. The reason why you cut it back a third is because basically you're deadheading it. So the way he says it's simple is instead of you going there with the clippers and deadheading every yeah. single little right. rose, cut it back by a third and it does the same thing. So the new growth's going to come out on that third and it's, it's going to end up budge. being the same length as it was initially. Yep, pretty much. What about these roses that are like, um, well, you started hearing about them a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, oh goodness, what are they called? The knockouts. Yes. Knockout roses. Knockout roses. Now would those be considered Same a repeat thing. bloomer? Yes, they're because repeat bloomers. Yes. I we bought a house and we flipped it and it had knockout roses mm -hmm. all in front of it. All and they had become so unruly. Yes. That when I bought the house I had no choice but to just cut them. Yes. And I don't know what month it was, but I cut them. Yes. So after I cut them, of course, when it was time to bloom, they bloomed. Mm -hmm. Well, they got Really big and crazy, really quick really because quick. they're just made to do that. So I cut them again mm -hmm. and I cut them with hedge cutters mm -hmm. because that was the easiest thing I could uh -huh. do at the time. Plus right. they had right. thorns on them and right. I just, you know, wanted to get my job done. Mm -hmm. Those things did repeat and repeat and repeat. They repeat bloomers. But I imagine had I just left them at that unruly height mm -hmm. and not cut them back, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't have repeated. That you would have got some blooms, but not as many. Hmm. Yep. So look, I was doing something right and you didn't even know it. You were doing something right. Yes. Well, I just wanted it to get out of the pathway at the time. And <laughs> no, so hey, I just. I would have been the same way because I didn't know anything. I'm telling you, I don't, I didn't know. And I still don't. I mean, I, I'm on, your, on this podcast. You're more knowledgeable than you like were I'm when you left. I'm some type of rose expert and I'm not about all beans whatsoever but you're I sharing took, your knowledge i am and i took four or five pages worth of notes not mm -hmm. including all the handouts they give you mary carl when he came in and he had a notebook full of writing and he told us that he took all these notes mary carl's mouth dropped and she was like daddy what did you learn and <laughs> she wanted a summary she, she didn't want to read summary. his notes somebody said that mary carl should have went with me she she would have enjoyed it but I think her attention span would have dropped off at some point. Yeah, and that's our thing. Is I we... may see if she wants to go to the Peruni one because it ends at 12. Okay, that'd be a good It doesn't last idea. all day. These do you need classes... to go ahead and sign her up? Uh, Yeah, I may do that. I may do that. Maybe um, Piper could go too and then... You know what? That's a good idea. That is a good if, idea. If, if, if I'll ask Katie if Piper's interested before. And then I can that. hang out and... If yep. they get done, then we can, of course, go run and you play can, and look for tadpoles. You and, can do that, too. And and we could go in two vehicles because you know what's going to happen. What's that? I'm going to stay there all day. Well. <laughs> I didn't get in to what, 6.30, 7 Yeah, it was way past dark. And <laughs> luckily, I had planned oh, for dinner man. ahead of time because I'm sure you were very hungry and... Yeah. Your knowledge was just overflowing. Oh, I could see man, I little was giddy. music notes coming out of your ears. <laughs> I was you... so heavy when I got home. <laughs> and, and, you know, I just, <sighs> I felt like, and I'll probably wonder why don't I go to them? Well, most of the time I'm occupying Mary Carl, and mm -hmm. I just feel like Jason can teach me what he learned and, mm -hmm. you know, carry on on. Right, right. Because I don't want her to feel like she's got to go to everything. That's and true. We, I don't even know what we did Saturday. I don't know. It was a, It was supposed to be halfway pretty Saturday. It ended up being cold and no sunshine whatsoever. And it wasn't supposed to be like that. I still but don't know what I did or what we did. Right. But we stayed here and yes. um, we made a day out of it. We did. <laughs> but oh, I... Oh, y'all did. Yeah, we did. Um, I feel more comfortable with you having some knowledge that you didn't have when you left. Yeah. You, you, yeah. And plus... You know, flowers and roses are kind of my thing. You know, I just absolutely love them. I absolutely love them. My volume, I'm going to cut my volume up on my camera here real oh, quick. Oh, come on. Well, it's because I have to sync it with the other. Otherwise, I, it's hard for me to do. Y'all see how tight it is in this camper? Oh, gosh. What'd you Now, now. Okay. okay. Now, sorry about that, guys. It's so, easier for me to sync it up with the. 
oh, okay. we're recording. Yeah, because you were having two different volumes. Mm-hmm, got two different volumes. Hmm. So but, now, yeah. um, when you got home, mm-hmm. the guys had worked on the house Saturday. They did had and which was odd because they usually don't come on Saturday, and but they did come on that Saturday. And matter of fact, I even told Brand, I was like, "Look, don't, don't, don't feel like you have to come over here and work on the house because of us. You know, I don't want to think we're." pressure and everything and he's like oh no 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 i'm coming over there because of me he, he um, wants to get some things accomplished he and- did because they had it rained a lot last week so he got behind and that was a catch-up day for him and boy did they get caught up wow that's what we did we can't we manhandled the camera for you y'all did manhandle the camera for me and i appreciate that so much so i had went around back and looked Obviously, Saturday after the guys had left, and I sent you a picture. You did send me a picture, and I was not expecting the whole back of the house, windows trimmed out, walls on. I was not expecting that at all. Every window was in the house Saturday, meaning garage, my mom's house. Right. And every door was set. Mm -hmm. And then they got all the metal put up on the back side of the house. So when I sent you a picture, your, your mouth open emoji came back and... That was all I got from you because you were in the middle of your class. But you obviously went and looked when you got home. I, I didn't did. go with you. But the next day when we went out together and looked, mm-hmm. we saw this big wide open area in between the windows because there are two windows in the garage. Yes. But then the next window is in mom's bedroom. So yes. it's a pretty wide span there of just. It is a big old blank wall there. Of white metal. Mm-hmm. Which would be beautiful with a colored rose growing it would be beautiful with a color rose on it but we're limited to sight to sight to light on the uh-huh. back side because well, i watched it all day yesterday it's the east side of the house i watched it i think we're going to be okay i'm going to watch it again for the next few days and kind of time it roses need six hours of sunlight um there's some that are called shade tolerant but like jason said there's no such thing as a shade tolerant rose that he's aware of and this guy is a you know you won't find anybody that knows more about roses than him, but four hours is the shade tolerant varieties. Four hours of sunlight. But we still probably need to get six hours. Six to, hours of sunlight. Yes. To be ample. Mm-hmm. And when I when I looked at the space, I thought, oh my, that would be a beautiful spot for a rose. But I, I, I just immediately thought it didn't get enough sun. Mm-hmm. Yesterday at three o'clock, that area was still full sun. Really? Mm-hmm. Now on the backside of our house, it had shifted ours was shade and i thought aha that could be the hydrangea garden yes because hydrangeas can't handle morning sun and that's what that would be the hot afternoon sun would be passed over right. our house so it might be protected so i'm gonna i'm gonna start watching that really really close and start documenting it that's my new thing <laughs> is keeping a journal and documenting that's something that i've never done i've tried to do i failed at it it's just because I couldn't focus just on the gardens and just, I've been writing everything down so but much do so. do you know where you put Yeah, the I keep writing. up with it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I keep up with it. I want four notebooks now. Uh-oh. Um, I got one notebook that's got everything in it. It's falling apart. I want four notebooks. I want one for the flower farm. Uh-huh. I want one for the fruit orchard. Okay. I want one for the, the our vegetable garden. Okay. And I want a general purpose one where I can just, you know, keep track of things that aren't inclusive of that well that's the one that i pick up and i jot down my grocery list in and (laughs) you know that's how we roll that's right that's how we roll so yeah i want i want forward keep it i want to just want to keep tabs on it just especially especially things i don't know about like the flower farm the flower farm's got to be kept up with oh yeah and then the fruit orchard you know like jason's dad dr powell said if you don't write it down how are you know when to uh, spray neem oil again on your fruit trees. That's right. You know, that kind of thing. And so I'm like, he's right. Well, he's I really, have to really do right. that with my cow. Yes. <laughs> I have to write down what I've, what shot I've given her, mm-hmm. what date that I've given it to her, what date that I need to be right. aware to give her another one. So I guess it's, I only have one cow to keep up with, but that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. So you keep up with your flowers and I keep up with my cow. <laughs> <laughs> oh me speaking of my cow she yes. just got a good brushing right before she we came did in. get a good brushing she, she uh she kind of thought 
it's the wrong time for you to be feeding me. Why are you coming after me? Yeah, she's giving you the stink out every She minute. was, What's but then doing? once I got to her and grabbed her halter and started brushing her, she was very in love. She was. So much so that she'll take her head and <laughs> and she puts it on mine and it's looking like some good Mildred loving going on. It was. But not some to good interrupt Mildred you about on. the flowers. Oh, that's fine. Speaking of flowers, so... I'm, I'm, and of course, I'm checking on them several times a day. What flowers? Your flowers you started in the We just started in, the in seed. That uh, when I had a migraine and was laying down, Jason. Yes, me and Mary Carl started our, our flower farm. I'm going to tell y'all, Mary Carl is just as excited and probably just as, as just as knowledgeable as I am. Well, I, I'm going to interrupt your train of thought for yeah. a minute because she came in and uh-huh. I heard her come in and I said, Mary Carl, you okay? And she said, yeah. And I said, are you hungry? You want me to fix you something to it's eat? around lunch. Yeah, it was around mm-hmm. lunch. And she can fix herself something mm-hmm. to eat, but I worked the oven for her. Mm-hmm. And she said, no, mama, I need to feed my pigeons. And mm-hmm. I said, okay. And she, I said, are you okay? And she kind of was looking like this. <laughs> and she and I said, "What's wrong?" And she said, "My neck's hurting." And I said, "Your neck's hurting." Oh, my she said, "Yeah." Hurting. She said, "Um, we've been planting flowers since we went out this morning. <laughs> we had it. it took a long time." And my neck's hurting. And I said, "Well, why is your neck hurting?" She said, "Cause I'm leaning over." So you are leaning and over. And I said, "Well, are y'all about done?" She said, "No, I think we got like five trays left to do." <laughs> And I said, well, I'm sure Daddy will understand if you if your neck's hurting too bad for you to go back out. Mm-hmm. She said, no, I'm going to feed my pigeons and I'm going back out. She did. Y'all, I mean, that morning, once she realized that we were going to start seeds, oh, she, I had a shadow. Let me tell you. <laughs> so she's in her room and the door's shut yeah. and we have an air purifier going in there because mm-hmm. there's birds in there. Yeah. And you and I will be in the other part of the camper, mm-hmm. and she 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 mysteriously can't hear anything we say. Very selective here, you know. <laughs> Mary Carl, make sure you rinse this bird cup out, <laughs> huh, ma'am? <laughs> I can't. Would you did you say something to me? <laughs> she can't hear it. Okay, so so Jason says to me, I think that I'm gonna since you've got a headache and it's you know kind of rainy misty rain outside today how about instead of planting fruit trees that i go ahead and start planting you know starting some seeds oh we 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 we, we, hey we gonna start seeds today open that door up quick didn't she she did (laughs) she she all of a sudden she heard something that she shouldn't have been even hearing yeah and it was at a tone of voice where you and i were discussing it between ourselves it was so funny and i wasn't even (gasps) We had moved the greenhouse and the worm bin, and we got to move the worm bin. We got to do that today. But, but anyways, um, <laughs> I was going to I'm fixing to get sidetracked. Um, so I wasn't even ready. I hadn't got, I didn't have my seeds starting to mix ready. I needed some more trays. I had to go down to the barn. It was going to be another 30 minutes, uh, extension cord for the heat mats. When she hears something like that, she means like, you're going to do it right now. She, and I said, look, Mary Carl, I'm not quite ready yet. I said, okay, okay, okay. 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 okay, okay, okay. Can I help you get some stuff together? So she was like, okay, just let me know when you're ready. I said, okay. I shut the door. By the time I shut the door and sat in the side by side, here she come. She was ready to help. So she went and helped me. We got all the stuff up and it was, it was, it was fun. I really enjoy that. And I'm so, it makes me so happy that she's so giddy about <laughs> it. I mean, she is... She is so excited, y'all. Well, I just, feel so guilty because I have had a headache since I was about 10 years old. Mm-hmm. And we know that they're migraines. And it just, when it hits me, it, it, it incapacitates and me. And it's so random. And you, it may, is you so may go random. two months, three months I without might. one. But Sunday was my day. Mm-hmm. And I just, I felt like poo. Yeah. I felt like poo. But I did not want to give up i mean right. you know i've got a, a family that needs me and my child i don't like her to go unoccupied especially when she doesn't have school so for her to have a love for something and to know that i didn't have to worry about it i closed my eyes and i literally slept all day sunday yeah and it worked out perfect you got a good bit of rest she was with me eight hours nine hours <laughs> Well, so it took us all day to get them seeds going pretty much. When I did get up and, and started preparing dinner, 
I can see that neck bobbing. She 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 went back out and she got back on it. But she you did. know, it was a lot of lot of work. Even it was though it was a lot of work. not a lot of you know, I yeah. guess it was more so. It's <sighs> tedious. It's just tedious. Um, I mean, we planted twelve hundred seeds. Twelve hundred and fifteen by 12, her count. Twelve hundred fifteen. That's what she yeah. told me. Twelve hundred fifteen seeds, and that's tedious because those flower, but the sunflowers aren't. Well, I'll say some of them. The pro cuts weren't that bad, but we had some some dwarfs and the chocolate cherry, and they're smaller seeds. But the Cosmo and the Xenia seeds, y'all, they're tiny. They're just they're just tiny, or they're flat, and my big old fat fingers, you know, I, I I'm trying to drop one in. So did she do most of that counting? And no, we she, and those are on a three hundred and twenty five three hundred. Uh, it's over three hundred sales in that seed tray, so. You know, it's really, really tedious. And she did the Cosmo. And then I, well, I take that back. You know, I was doing, and then I had to go get something. I had to go start more seed mix. Well, she kept going. <laughs> and so she had knocked all the zinnias out after I'd done about half of them. And then, of course, then she started on the Cosmo. Then when she went and got some seed, I finished the Cosmos out. So, but yeah, we worked well together and, and uh, got it done. But I haven't told her yet that I, that was two days ago. Wasn't it? That was that was Sunday. Sunday. Today's Tuesday. Tuesday. So that's Monday, Tuesday. The zinnias are already up. You didn't tell her? I haven't told her yet. You told me. I told you. Because I just happened to be outside when you came out of the greenhouse. The zinnias are almost every cell is up with zinnias in two darn days. So what do you do if they're up and ready to go in the ground before time? Oh, uh, I would just baby them. They should be. I they should have. They won't get too leggy? Not in the greenhouse. I'll um, I'll just watch them. I'll just watch them. Uh, I got. I still got four weeks before they'll go in the ground. Yeah, no, I got a little time. I think we're okay. Hmm. Uh, You know, my next plan is to start working the soil where we're going to start the flowers, Uh and um, get us some compost, and then I'm going to uh weed mat it, and we got to get. We're going to burn holes, Mm -hmm. and uh. I don't know exactly how to do all that yet, but I've been talking to Katie. So I'll get all that figured out, and then we'll have somewhere to plant. Well, and we'll get going. Um, Piper came over, hmm, I don't know what day it was. <laughs> Piper didn't come here. Mary no, Carl went, there. went there. And upon our dismissal, uh-huh. the plan was that Katie wanted to come here. Mm-hmm. Well, she's been wanting to come here. And just her husband works in construction, so he's always busy. Yeah. And, he never has a set time that he gets off. He gets off when he finishes his job. Right. And so he wants to come see the progress of the house, more so the pond, because he does that too. And she told me, I said, look, I said, you're just, we're here every day. You're just going to tell me what works for you. But you know what? What's that? The time's fixing to change. Ooh. And so I think that's going to allow her the ability to get over here one Katie, day. If you're listening, if you come here, I'm going to put you to work. <laughs> Well, she's I'm got just two, kidding. Two I'm just going to ask can... her a million questions. Well, she wants to ask us a million questions <laughs> well, too. That's what's funny is is that you know I'm I I don't claim to be knowledgeable about vegetable gardening because I don't feel like I am. But she asked me a lot of vegetable garden questions, and so I'm answering her questions while. I, I'm asking her flower questions, and she's answering my questions. You're so, an exchange of knowledge. So we are been exchanging some some knowledge there with each other. So they want to they want to take a trip over here to see the house, but the house has kind of been at a standstill since the Saturday. The rain really messed us up last week. It, it did, and it rained. I, I, I got to get that rain gauge. I don't know how many inches we got, but I'm guessing. Educate, and I think I'm going to be conservative saying this. But those three rainstorms brought in at least three inches of rain. At I least in a short two days was a short amount of time. Well, it messed Greg up with the pond bill. Yes, and he's here today. He is. First it time messed, in over a week. Messed Russell up with the plumbing. Yes. And it messed Brant up with the building. It messed up everything. So we're it's kind of like a week or so behind now. We woke up Monday morning and it was silence here. It was. And it was so silent that Mary Carl Googled if it was a holiday that we didn't know about. Because <laughs> there wasn't nobody here. And she found out it was like National Chocolate Day. And I was like, Mary Carl, nobody celebrate National Chocolate Day. I can I would, assure you. I would if I'd have known it. <laughs> 
Well, today is National Pig Day, and I know that because somebody sent it. And I think oh, really? Peaches deserves a special shout out. Oh, wow. Peachy. National Pig Day. National Pig Day. Maybe we'll give her a rub down today. But Brant had some things going on that he was not able to get to while it was raining. Yeah. And so he had to make hay, well, literally, probably, yeah, <laughs> make hay on Monday right. <laughs> to help his wife with, you know, she's a cattle farmer. Yes. And so nobody was here Monday working. Um, the plumber's ditches were too filled in with water still. So he got a pump in there on Monday and started pumping out some water. Yes. Plumber's here today. Greg's back on the pond. Greg's back on the pond. And Brant will be back tomorrow. Be back in the morning. Be back you know, in the morning. Brant's wife just makes me smile. Why I'm going to tell you. You know, if she, to me, she is the prime example. If you love to do something, no matter what, you can do it. She is a full-fledged cattle farmer. And she's 100 pounds soaking wet and has two small children. And she obviously does a jam up job of Y'all, what she does. It is just, it just amazes me. I'm talking full fledged cattle farmer. And she is a tiny lady, but she evidently is strong as an ox. Well, she knows technique, obviously. I'm sure. And she knows what she's doing. And. You know, the confidence when you when you do know what you're doing mm-hmm. is there, and that overrides everything else. If you're confident yes. and you're a little bit knowledgeable, then you can get it done. She's another one, too, that I ask a lot of questions <laughs> about cows if she comes over here. Last yeah. time she came over here, I was asking her questions about cows. So, yeah. But, man, she, that just, she just amazes me, blows my mind, because she and does it. I, mean, I know Brent helps her a lot. Yeah, and I and but I commend still, him for oh yeah you know um like he told us that he was having to help his wife move some bulls and mm-hmm. you know her business has to go on um, no matter and I'm sure the rain held her up I'm moving sure cows did. from mm-hmm. pasture to pasture but for him to help her when she needs a lending hand mm-hmm. is 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 a great duo. She bails her own hay. I mean, it just it blows me and and extremely young. Yeah. And it just, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of both of them, to be honest with you. Brent owns his own little construction business and is doing this, and she owns her own cat, cattle farm. Just, It's just awesome. Somebody commented on um, one of the videos that the builders looked young. Oh, yeah. They are very young. Very young. But Brent is here every 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 day, mm-hmm. and it's not like he just turns his guys loose and tells them what to do. He's here. He's, he's here. superintendent. He's <laughs> working himself, <laughs> and he's making sure everything done is done correctly. Yeah. So, um, but I was going to talk about the trip to the tornado shelter. Before you do that, I do want to mention that um, we got sidetracked. I wanted to mention that uh, about pedals and Jason. Mm-hmm. That I talked to Jason. And I figured you guys may like this because he's so daggum knowledgeable. Is that to get him with me and do a podcast together? And he said he was gung ho. And I said, Look, my equipment is small. I got these two mics. I got this mixing board right here and my laptop and my camera. We don't have to have hey, any big room or nothing. And we could do a podcast. And he was like, Man, bring it on for me to let him know when. And he would work it in and make it happen. Well, when you told me that, I thought to myself that my friend is brilliant. I th- I think y'all would like it because I'm telling y'all. It might need to be like a 10 segment podcast. Ten. Well, I told him, I said, let's do it like this. Let's just, I said, first of all, my podcast are casual and wherever it goes, it goes. Yeah. If we get on there and start talking about roses and we end up talking about donkeys, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> We're not worried about it. Well, it needs to be something witty saying something about the Jasons. I, you know, <laughs> I didn't think about that. That'd be something cool. with the Jasons. I'll, I'll think of that. But because his name is Jason too. Yeah. But I told him, I said, look, we'll pick them, just say March. So whatever, whatever you think people need to know about in March is what we'll talk about. If it had been February, we could have done roses. Well, it could be like a monthly thing. Yeah, we could figure it out. We'll figure it out. But I, I thought you guys may like that. Here, my wheels are turning. I'm trying to think of a Jason name, and I need to stop because it's... <laughs> and then I can get Tracy. Yes. Who's just as knowledgeable. <laughs> and she, her thing is, is design. 
garden designing and, and so I could get her on here. And most of y'all know who Tracy is anyways from Just Dig It Farm and, and make it once I've had some bigger farms per se reach out to me and want to be on the podcast. But my confidence level of talking to someone like I that. I can be the stand back person <laughs> and just pick up the conversation if it leads to um, nothing. Just I feel awkward. And so I don't feel awkward around Jason and I don't feel awkward around Tracy. So that could get me going. And, and if I have opportunity to, you know, I can even, I know, I know Scott would do it. Scott Peacock. Yeah, that'd but be cool. I would, I would feel a little, even though Scott is probably my best friend, I would still feel awkward getting him on here but anyway just to get my feet wet. you know what what struck me as alarming what's that you and mary carl were watching a show mm-hmm. and i don't even know who the woman was it's but aaron it's florette form um if y'all don't know it is a they're probably at one time the, the probably most popular well-known flower farm and farmer in the country um, her name's Erin. I can't say her last name. It's like Brzezinski or something like that. But her farm is called Florette Farm. Very well known. Very popular. Even I know who it was. They recently, and I say recently, it could have been on a year ago. I don't know. But I just found out that she had a four-part series on Discovery Plus that kind of followed them around. It's like a little documentary mini series. Was it not on Amazon? Uh-uh. It's, oh, it's, okay. it's Discovery Plus. Okay. But I think you may can watch it on her website. But yeah, we started watching that. We well, all started watching it. We love it. We got one more episode to go. I'm just kind of, you know, in the background mm-hmm. doing other things and answering questions, emails, whatever. Um, maybe taking a shower from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm making my popcorn mm-hmm. and I hear that lady mm-hmm. say how nervous she gets every time yes. she has a book signing yep. or even let Anything. people come to our farm, whatever. And I thought to myself, you know what? I don't have that problem. No. So I don't understand how people could be nervous. Right. Um, but you talking about having somebody, even your friend on your podcast, yes. makes you a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, anxious. A little bit. That doesn't bother me. Okay. So the planning of going to the tornado shelter. Yes. I, I keep calling it the safety shelter facility. Yes. Was not in my mind as being something that would cause me to be anxious. Oh. But the preparation that it involved here to be away from the farm. Yeah. To make sure everything. P- P- that's when she went to Piper's. Mary Carl went to Piper's on Thursday, so she oh. was gone all day. That's right. We gave her the opportunity to stay here Friday. She went to bed Thursday night not knowing if she was going to go with us right, or not. Right, right, right. That's making my anxiety go up because right. I, I like to be prepared. <laughs> and I didn't know if we were going to have a passenger or not. How yeah. silly is that? I mean, that is so silly for me to be anxious about that. Mm-hmm. That's something I'm anxious about. But I'm not anxious about going somewhere and say, hey, sit down, let's have a conversation. Yeah, no. We're about to talk about making biscuits with celebrity chef Scott Peacock. That doesn't bother me. You know, when she got into that, I was like, oh my gracious, me and her are a lot alike. She said she was very introverted, extremely shy. I was like, that's me. And you wouldn't think that because of who she is, but she's got four books out. That's she's extremely popular. And I think people probably think the same thing about me. He's shy. He's introverted. No way. He does all he, he don't seem like it. And you don't. Everybody's different. And, um, <laughs> but not knowing if Mary Carl was going to the tornado. That made you nervous. <laughs> and that didn't make me nervous. And not only did it make me nervous, my anxiety level was up from Thursday to Sunday. And that's probably what brought on the migraine. If it, the truth you know done. what? You could have been right. I just I didn't now thought about, about that, that for the first time. Could have been. It could be in. My, I could literally but, feel my anxiety level was through the roof, and I had no idea why. And your mom's here, so it's not like she's here by herself. And it's I mean. not like we were spending the night <laughs> well, or sure anything. You're just going to be gone for a few hours. It, I think it was just the unknowing if Mary Carl was going or not. Right. I needed to fix her breakfast or, you know, have her something, mm-hmm. make sure I had... I wasn't prepared for groceries to be here. You know, if I'm right. here, I can wing something. I can make it work. But I'm not going to let her fry eggs when nobody's here. Right. 
to make an egg oh, sandwich. Oh, exactly right. No you way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I had to have something prepared. Right, right, right. And that made me a little cuckoo. Yeah, she's got these baby pigeons she's taking care of. She's supposed to be on this podcast, by the way. And last night I told her, I said, you know, we need to record a podcast tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you were going to show your pigeons. Right. She said, Mama, they're too crazy. <laughs> And I said, Mary Carl. And she said, I'm serious, Mama. She said, they've gotten old enough now to where they, yesterday she went into her room and there was a pigeon sitting on the top of the tote and she had just left it a little crack. Oh, my gracious. And she said, they can't go. That's I, funny. And I said, well, do you still want to go and, and talk about the pigeon? Uh-uh. uh-uh. They're too crazy. That's funny. So that's why she's not here. That's why she'll not. You know what? They will get on here for the flowers. She'll talk about flowers. Oh, she, it wasn't that she didn't want to do it. She oh, yeah. literally meant that they're they crazy. can't do yeah. it. They, yeah. They're crazy. And so, you know. That. And she loves, when she's, when she's into something now, she loves telling you about it. Oh, she, she was talk trying to, to come up with a way yeah. to make it work. But she said, I, I just can't talk about them and not show them. You know what? Maybe we need to get in here with the fantails because they just sit on her shoulders. Oh, they do. She comes walking across the farm. Oh, walk, I say, Mary Carl, things are going to fly off. No, they're not. And she... What she's doing now is is she's trying to get them used to going into the Purple Pigeon Palace and everybody getting acquainted with each other and all that. I was told a few minutes ago they're staying out all day today. (gasps) Wow. Well, they've been going. She came back without them. And I said, where are the pigeons? Mm -hmm. Bean and Palomona. Don't ask me. (laughs) Palomona. She these crazy names. Bean is all I know. Bean doesn't love her as much as. Bean doesn't love her as much as the other one does. Okay. And she's kind of gotten sad about that. but Ah. Uh, well, they're probably starting to get, you know, I won't say wild, but, I mean, they're they're big now. They're full grown. Well. And she, and literally, y'all, when she takes them to the Purple Pigeon Palace, there's no tote or nothing. They're just sitting on her shoulder. And she's walking all the way across the pasture with them. And, and then when she brings them in, she comes back. And she was letting them stay in there about an hour. And then she comes walking back with these big old fancy pigeons on her shoulder. And I said, Mary Carl, they're going to fly off. Daddy, they're not going to fly off. <laughs> and they haven't yet. So she knows well, what she's talking about. I kind of realize what she's trying to do to me. What's that? Is she's been showing me these people that have these pet pigeons. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got you. Mama, look. This one had an accident and it fell off a power line oh. and this lady nursed it back to health and now it lives in a birdcage in the house and it's a house pigeon. Oh, my God. And without saying so, since she thinks Bean is not so attached to her, Pomonia or whatever the thing's name is, she thinks needs to be a house pigeon. Oh my gosh. And she's slowly been showing me these things. I know what she's doing. I know what she's doing. She's preparing you. But now both of them are outside. So maybe she's finally maybe, realized that maybe they're both they're both outside birds and they need each other. They do need each other. She knows that. Yeah, she knows that. And and the other one may be starting to get more attached to being than her. Who knows? Well, she says it, that. It, ask her. She says that if it's a male and female, she's gonna have to break that up. Oh, that's true because they're brother and sister. And in chickens, that doesn't matter, but in pigeons, it does. Really? So I, I don't know I why. I don't know any it. details about that, but she says, and I think that's where that's going. Oh. Okay. That she's thinking is it is a male and female is what her thoughts are, and she's gonna break that up by bringing one of them in the house. <laughs> Be maybe a house maybe pigeon. they're not male and female. They're two females, and that's why she's going to Well, be... she knows how to... Oh, she something, can them. Okay. Something about their pelvis bone or something. <laughs> so so now that I've gotten all oh, off track and told you about that, we need to go back to the tornado shelter. The tornado shelter. Uh, that was quite a trip. And right off the bat, I want to tell y'all that anybody can go there and take a tour of the place. There was nothing special for us or anything like that. They just invited us to come over there because we're getting a tornado. I mean, we're buying a tornado shelter from them, and they wanted us to check their place out. And just it, it's a mom. I want to say mom and pop every time. It's a father and son. Yes. Business. It is. I mean, it is. When you think of a family-owned business, that's what I think of. It kind of reminded me of Reliable, my, the dealership I right. worked for. That was a family. The dad started in 1946. Then the the son, Mr. Bill Porter, who I worked for, got it. And now both his sons are there. And it's just that homey family feel. 
And that's how it was. Well, when, when it started out, y- y'all know that we were going to have a closet built. That's right. A- out of metal mm-hmm. and have these guys that are right down the road from mm-hmm. us come in and fabricate a safe room for us. We did. And they came over and they told us, you know, unless you've got just money running out your ears, it's not financially feasible. He did. He, he and I commend him for that. I oh, mean, yes. that shows you, you know, I, I just love this area. Um, he was like, look, y'all, it's, it's, I, he said, if y'all want to do it, I'll do it. He said, but I'm, I hate to talk y'all out of it, but it's just not worth it right now. He said, right now, right the now, price is still for me to buy it because he's a small, mm-hmm. just <laughs> mom and pop yeah, business. That's right. He can't buy it at a big break right. if he was buying large quantities to build you know, mm-hmm. ships or <laughs> I don't know what they do with steel, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. And so that kind of opened our door as to, well, that was our plan all along. What yeah. we're going to do now. Now what we're going to do now. So how many times have we had to run in Home Depot for this or that, you know, for fencing mm-hmm. and Purple Pigeon Palace mm-hmm. and stuff. And right when you walk in the door at Home Depot and Lowe's, they've got these shelters sitting there. At least here in Alabama, I don't know how it is anywhere else, but Alabama, when you walk right in, you're going to see, you're going to walk right past one of these steel above the ground tornado shelters. And if you don't know what it is, you're going to turn around, you're going to say, what is is that? Yeah. uh, Because it looks like a big, gigantic gun safe. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's usually around over there. Um, But we went there and I had just no idea... I thought it was going to be a little smaller scale that, man, y'all, they were, they had it going on. Well, I was going to say how I found them. So okay. we, um, we had, we had this close to deciding we're going to go with Home Depot. That's right. And we had researched it online and they could have one delivered here by like my, March the 3rd. Mm-hmm. But. We were going to be installing it ourselves. Have to install it ourselves. And these above the ground ones, you know, it has to be a minimum of a four inch slab. Uh, and then you had to put these anchors in. And I kept telling you, look, I'm not confident. You know, this is a tornado shelter. I mean, I know they say it's easy. You know, they give you the instructions, blah, blah, blah. But still, a tornado shelter, I just don't feel comfortable installing this or anchoring this tornado shelter down to our slab. I so just I, don't feel like it. I, I mean, started it reading the reviews. Scared me to death. And person after person was like, oh, it's so easy. Yeah. It's, if you can, you know, if you can anchor a, a bolt in, then you can do it. Well, fine and dandy that it's easy to do, but that didn't take Jason's confidence from. No, not zero. at all. Not at all. I even watched a video and I was like, it looks easy, but I'm still, there's just, mm-mm. I just, uh, mm-mm. So I, when he said that, I kind of figured out real quick that, you know, if he didn't feel comfortable doing it, we probably ought not go this route. So I started doing just a Google search of shelters, tornado shelters, storm shelters Mm -hmm. in Alabama. Yes. And that's, that's where the kicker was is all these that I found were not, not manufactured in Alabama. They were manufactured somewhere else, but they could ship it here. But that still meant Jason was going to. Install, install it. it and and can you imagine just i installed that thing a tornado comes by and i survived and i'm <laughs> the only one because the tornado shelter flipped over I just you know it's just just couldn't do it i just couldn't do it so lo and behold in my search i found uh a company and it was in Hartsell, Alabama. Well, mm-hmm. I just so happened to know where that was because Mary Carl's friend lives in Decatur, Alabama, which is right near Hartsell. Very close. So, um, I I did a little research and on, found their Facebook page and ended up finding out cost by yes. entering my zip code. Mm-hmm. Found out that I was in the region to have my shelter installed. Yes. And found out that the cost that they provide includes installation and delivery. That's right. And it was comparable to the ones you buy from Home and Home Depot and Lowe's. It was. It was comparable in yes. price. And so I told Jason about it and I said, I'm going to reach out to him on Monday. I'm going to call him. Mm-hmm. And so I called him and they immediately sent me over to somebody to discuss specs and told mm-hmm. me all the details and told me about their website. So I, we looked it over together and we found out that even though it was an above the ground shelter, mm-hmm. which is what we were 
deciding that we were going to go with yes, anyway. That's right. Um, it could withstand F five, which F five. If y'all don't know, that's the biggest tornado there is. Two hundred fifty mile an hour winds. I think plus. it's one hundred fifty. Well, they're they're. I wish I had their brochure. Their brochure says it stand it can withstand up to two hundred and fifty plus mile an hour winds. Um, but the EF five is the biggest that they have. Biggest they have. So you know, we had kind of been thinking, like probably most of our viewers, that underground was better. You know, something being underground was right. better. And I didn't necessarily want them to prove me wrong, but I wanted to do my research. Yeah. And so upon doing research, we found out that it's logical that above ground was the way to go. Yeah, if you if you if it's done properly, which these are above the ground for several reasons. Number one, we don't have to worry about it flooding or filling up with water. Right. Number two, it's very easily accessible. That's what I was fixing to say. We don't have to it's go outside. It's wheelchair accessible. I mean, you know, your your mom is going to share it with us. Right. And who's to say 20 years down the road from now that, that she has a walker? Well, I may have a walker. You know, and it's walker accessible. It's wheelchair accessible. Uh and and it and it meets or exceeds FEMA's regu- standards and regulations. Theirs are tested at Texas A and M through a wind test where it's shooting uh, two by four at it. At gosh, I forget how many hundred mile an hour it's going at it. It's, it. It passes all of this. As a matter of fact, on the tour they showed us one that went through an EF four tornado. Right. Yeah. So it's uh it's pretty awesome. And what's crazy is, is that after I saw these, because they make them all different sizes. They got a four by five is the uh, smallest one. Uh-huh. We got the four by six. Uh huh. And then they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they got these looks like something you'd see at a fallout shelter at a military base. Yeah. They're just like shaped like like a half circle. They and they're accommodate a hundred people. And they're long. And I was like, man, where are these? He's like, well, you know, schools have them, communities have them, businesses, uh, large businesses, large businesses. He just went on all these people that have them. And when I went to Pedals from the Past for the Rose class, I saw two of those huge ones. I passed two volunteer fire departments, and I've never noticed them before. Huh. But I noticed them then because we went on that tour and saw all the ones they make. And I was like, look at that! I didn't even notice them until now, yep. and there they are, two hundred people. And they were two different locations. I was like, look at that. Ain't that something? So if it, we found out during our tour, if it's an outdoor shelter, yeah. then they actually come in and pour the slab. Yeah. They make the one, the one we're getting is going to go in the garage. So they won't so pour it's covered. slab. Right. But they make one that has a slanted roof like this. It looks like a, it looks like a little shed, basically. Yeah. yeah. But it's all steel. They use quarter inch steel. And it's USA made. They have a, their own guy that does all their concrete work and that's all this guy does and they go he said within a four to five hour you know what he said yeah. radius of their of their um their business of their location yep. and it's called safety shelter so if you are interested you know you could call them or ask them email them and it's They're, just for your own personal yeah. benefit because the way we look at it or the way my thoughts were is you're being protected from something wiping you out right okay like i'm thinking like the tornado's coming and it's just going to take it away right but now my mind has shifted after touring the facility and realizing that most deaths occur from flying debris yeah the flying debris yeah debris you can't say it so skip it. it um <laughs> but yeah yeah i had and i had learned that recently before we went on the tour that most of the time, it's it's, a, it's some type of debris that gets people. It's not the actual being lifted up and thrown, right. which also does, too. Well, it protects you yeah. against that, too, it because it's you against that too. Yeah. bolted into right. the four-inch slab. Ooh, and I was going to tell them, you know what else it has in it? What? Most your underground, the door opens out. Uh-huh. This one opens in, and you think, well, what difference does that make? Well, what if a car gets slung up against it? Or a wall crashes on it. If you're if you're on the underground and that door opens out, you, you can't, can't get out. It. These the door, door door opens in, so you can open the door in and you can crawl out. So that was another advantage too. 
And it'll lock from the inside as yes. well as the outside. Yes, and the inside lock overrides the outside lock. So if you needed to lock yourself in, being protected against something right. or somebody, mm-hmm. heavens to Betsy, if that were to occur, but right. you could get in there because not only is it a, a shelter from weather, it's a sh- shelter to be safe. Right. That's right. So that's um, what I call safety shelter. Yeah, that's we're not right. spokespeople for this company we're or not. anything they're, like they're that. They're not paying us to say this or anything. We just, we just. I was just amazed at the whole process right. um, and that it happens right here in Alabama. Right. And that I did not go with my first intuition, which was to get you to bolt it down. They told yeah, us that too. they there had been occasions where they had sold a shelter. They went to the location to have it to bolt it down. Mm-hmm. And they told them no, no because their slab was not in a condition to where it could hold the right. the shelter. Right. And they wouldn't do it. And they're it just, you know, they're concerned overall about some somebody's safety and they're not going to just and they also will not sell one without installing it yes. they won't sell you one they have to install it hi actually um when we got back i want he was striving to us saying that they had five star google reviews they do and <laughs> i, I might have had something to do with that saying that i'd read reviews and they had yeah. five star reviews and yeah we started talking about he said you know some of these companies they buy reviews and i am not about that right Mine are a hundred percent, and that's what we balance our company off of, is or base our company off of, is actual customers' experience. Mm -hmm. So, I was just doing a little search and reading some of the questions that people had Uh about their shelters, and I want to say it was on Facebook. Uh Um, reading, but but this was before we went. Right. And some man was saying that he didn't need them to come out and install the shelter. He could install it himself. Right. He just wanted them to deliver it and drop it off. And their response was, no, sir. We include installation in the price of the shelter itself. And we do the install. And that person got mad. Yeah, that's a little crazy. Yeah. But anyway, I talk, he, he told me, he's like, look, we're, we, we care so much about the people's safety. You know, we don't, you know, how terrible would they feel if they sold somebody one and it wasn't installed property, properly and, you know, and they got injured or worse. And he was like, you know, we can't, we, we, we just can't live with ourselves like that. You know, we can't, that would just worry them sick. So they installed them all themselves. They installed them They got a two-man all. crew. That's, I mean, that's, that's just crew. amazing. So, Jason won't get stuck with installing a storm shelter into no. our slab and worrying about... Thank goodness. Worrying about the um, what-ifs. Thank goodness. Uh, I'm, I said it earlier, and if I don't talk about it, then I'm going to get in big trouble. Okay. The fruit orchard. Mm-hmm. We have started on the fruit orchard, got all our fruit trees, like I said. Mm-hmm. And we have all the fruit trees in the ground. Got all those done. Going to work on the blueberries and blackberries, hopefully today. That's right. But I wanted to tell you guys that we do have the fruit trees in the ground. And, you know, when we had, when we built the berms and the swales and there was nothing in them, it didn't really look, I mean, it it looked like it could be, you know, some fruit, fruit orchard, whatever. But yesterday when I got finished putting all them fruit trees in, it really looks awesome. It does. And you, you went ahead and fed Moody while I kind of hung back and finished up. And when I got finished, I walked to the top where our house is mm-hmm. and kind of looked down. Don't and I, look good. I, I I caught myself grinning, looking down. But I wanted to say this, that Mama came out, I don't know, right after we uh-huh. pulled all the old trees up. We had the berms and the swells built, but there was nothing in it. Right. And she said, Brooke, she said, I'm going to tell you. That area over there where y'all are planting those fruit trees, it looks a sight better than it did before. <laughs> she, she ain't seen it since we put the fruit trees no, in it. but this was just empty burns. Oh, okay, because that and was I just thought, the evening uh, when I You put know, I kind of made a face at her, and I was like, okay. Yeah. Because at that point, I couldn't see much difference. Oh, it looks... Yesterday when I got the fruit... And it don't have... We're going to come back. We're going we're gonna to mulch the top. I need the to top. call them when I get off of okay. this. Okay. And we're going to put... A uh, big stone in the swales. My original plan was thinking about putting mulch in the swales, but after we had those hard rains, it would bl- it, it would wash those out. The- so we're going to put some big, big either river rock or railroad rock. It's going to take a bundle of it in in those swales. Um, and 
man, it is awesome. I will say this if you if you want to know, we we I planted three Asian pears. I got a Shinko, a Hatsui, and I got the Korean Giant. This is our first row, and then I got two Fuyu persimmons. Then I got two European pears, which I got the Warren and the Ayers. Then the next row is apples, and I got Golden Delight. I got a uh, Gold Rush. I got Aztec Fuji. I got Arkansas Black, and I got Gala. Ooh. That's our apples. How do you remember all that? I don't know. And then I got a, and I, and I couldn't remember somebody's name if they told me two seconds ago. <laughs> then I got on the end, I got a big crab apple, which is a southern crab apple. And Jason and Tracy suggested I put it on the far end because that thing's going to get really big. It's going to be pretty cheap. It's going to be beautiful. But it'll pollinate the apples. It'll pollinate the apples and it produce lovely crab apples. Then, and plus my apples are going to pollinate each other too, right, right, but right. I'll have that for insurance. Uh-huh. Then the next row is our fig row, and I got three LSU purples. Then I got an LSU black. Then I got a Rourke, and then I got the green Isha. And my rows are a lot longer than what me and Tracy had anticipated when she designed it. So it looks like that I can finish out probably either that pear row or I'm not going to do the apples. I'm going to leave. I got a spot for three more apple trees. I'm just going to leave that in case I want down the road another apple tree. But the pears, I think I may put a couple of stone fruit there instead of making a whole row of stone fruit trees. And stone fruit are peaches, plums, nectarines, the new hybrids where you got plums and peaches mixed. That's what a nectarine is. It's a plum and a peach i think i forget what a nectar <laughs> is but it's a you know it don't have the fuzz on it yeah so got all got that done then our figs i think i'm gonna leave the figs empty in case we want to add more fig trees down through there but you got two rows left got a good bit of row no bit, i'm, oh, I'm no. saying we have two more rows yeah we got we got several rows left but we've got two that are already done and mm-hmm. one's got blueberries we haven't planted those i got those starting to lay those out uh i got I know the names of the blueberries. It's um, it's we got Premier, we got Becky Blue, we got Climax, and then I got two Bright Wolves. How do you remember that? And then I can't remember how you say that last one. We got I don't know. I don't know how I remember it. And then the next one will be our blackberries, which we got Kiwa. I think that's how you say that. Kiwa. 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 Blackberries, and we got thirty foot of blackberries. That's going to be a lot of blackberries. It's going to be a lot. That'll be, it's 45 pounds per 10 foot. So roughly 150 pounds of blackberries is what we'll get. You know, and I'm sure that's if everything's right. And Yeah, you know. sure, sure. Um, But that row is going to be way empty because our rows are right at 100 foot. So we'll have at least 60 foot left on that blackberry row. So we have oh, a decision Oh, we just add more make. blackberries. Do we want to add more blackberries? Yes, we do. And then that leaves us with two rows, and that should be our musky dimes and our kiwis. Now, Tracy's original plan was is to put them on the hillside, but after looking, our hillside is really, really steep. It's all compacted red uh, dirt for mm-hmm. because that hillside is made by Mr. Greg. And I was kind of scared because we had that one spot kind of washing out. I was kind of scared if I start messing around with that hillside, yeah. I may create an issue. Right. So I'm just going to move them into a row and re- she had a big pergola that's going to, that she had to, you know, say we ought to put here. And I'm just going to just kind of shift stuff around. But that is our fruit orchard. And we'll have more space eventually if we ever want to do anything else. Well, I sure hope we have that freeze dryer plugged in and ramped up and ready to go by the time <laughs> this fruit start producing. I told Jason at Petals that. You didn't like fresh figs. Uh-huh. That, me and Mary Carl love uh-huh. fresh figs, but you loved uh-huh. the freeze dried figs. I do. And he was like, he could understand why that, that all that sugar is concentrated. It's just like candy. It is just like candy. And I said, you're exactly right, man. If it's I had just def- like candy. We have not experimented a whole lot with the freeze dryer, but Mm-mm. everything we've, we've done has turned out to be successful. It has. But if I had to buy a freeze dryer just for figs, it, I would do so. Yeah. That's how good they are to they me. They're very it's good. It's just like candy. It is just like candy. It just really like is. candy. We're going to have a lot of blueberries. Well. So I can see us freeze drying blueberries. Those are very good 
They are. They just pop in your mouth they for do. a good snack, and you mm-hmm. can just put them in a Ziploc bag and carry them outside with you and have at it. I wonder what blackberries they do. I was just, I was thinking when you said, I bet they're good. I bet they're good. They're probably going to shrink up a lot because there's a high moisture content in right. them, but I bet they're good. Now, I don't particularly like blackberries fresh off the vine. You don't, but me and Mary Carl do. Yes, y'all do. I mean, I can count on my hand the number of stains that she had on shirts when she was a little girl <laughs> because I can always remember it was Mother's Day weekend when Petals from the Past had their Blackberry Festival. It was around that time. Mm-hmm. And we always took her as a small child because she loved blackberries and she always had on those cute little smock yes. clothes, you know. <laughs> and 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 I always got a sad look on my face on the way home because I knew that was a stain that wasn't going to come out. That's, yeah, she loved them. Love blackberries. You know, I am with fruit, and th- this it reminded me because when I was in a rose class, Tracy was with me because she went and she worked there forever, and it, that just shows you how great these classes are. Yeah, Tracy is so knowledgeable. Worked at Petals for the past for X amount of years. Spoke, spoke. She speaks and had spoke at Petals things and. She still goes to these classes because she still learned from Jason and Dr. Powell. And that I just blows my mind. I can remember asking her when she came over here and, and looked at our orchard to try to help us create a design. Right. I said, why do you go to the classes? <laughs> and and it probably came off as like I was being a not so nice person. But I really was wondering, why would you want to go to these classes? And yeah. she said, any time Dr. Powell or Jason speak I make an opportunity to listen. Because you can't learn too much. I take the opportunity yeah. to listen. Because can't. even if it's repeat information, I guarantee you it can be saturated yeah. over and over again. Over and over again. And Until, you know, that, that information is put right in the front where you need it. So when we were there for the rose class, Jason would talk about a certain rose. And she'd say, she'd lean over, she said, well, first off, he started talking about this rose. And she'd go, that's my favorite rose right there. I love that rose. That's my favorite. And so I write it down. I'm like, she crazy likes this rose. I'm gonna write it down. Five minutes later, Jason's talking about another rose. She goes, and that one right there, that's my favorite rose right there. <laughs> so <It's funny. laughs> after about 15 different roses, I done wrote down 15 different roses because all of them were Tracy's favorite. And I find myself doing that with the fruit trees because I say, pears are my favorite fruit. Pears are my favorite fruit. Then figs. Figs are no doubt my fa- I love figs. They're, they're my favorite fruit. But blackberries <laughs> are your favorite. Are my favorite fruit. And then fresh apples are by far my favorite fruit. You and know, I feel like Tracy with her roses. <laughs> um, I had just about gotten to the point where I stopped buying apples in the grocery store. Man, because apples. Because they just had zero flavor. So I discovered... <laughs> Buying organic apples made Mm -hmm. all the difference in the world. So, you know, I will not, I just cannot make myself buy an apple that's not organic. Right. Reason being, it has flavor. Yeah. But here lately, I have found, I don't know if they're getting mixed up or what's going on, but the last few times that I've purchased some, Mm -hmm. you'll have one that's a gold apple. Tastes really, really good. It's wonderful. It's the it's the best flavor you've ever had. The next one you pick up, it's like ugh, just eating, eating a water. piece of cardboard. You're just eating water. It's crazy. And I told you, I was like, I just it's not even I, hardly worth. Don't taking even the buy gamble. them anymore. Don't even buy them because uh, you eat one, it's super delicious, and the next three taste like you. You, you like the like this right here is just but water. I, I it's bet crazy. I bet when we grow our own apples. Oh yeah, it's gonna be night and I day. I bet difference. that every one that comes off that tree mm-hmm. is going to be the golden ticket. Night and day difference. The golden yes. ticket. I'm mean, so excited. We should have some fruit this year. We won't have a lot, but this year, yeah, we'll have this year. Mm-hmm, we'll have some little bitty fruit. Some. We better fruit. go out there and get started on that house so we can <laughs> plug that freeze dryer in. <laughs> well, I don't think we'll have enough to freeze dry. To freeze dry. We'll be eating all these. Well, that might be a good thing because I gotta be prepared. Yeah. I gotta be prepared. I gotta plan ahead. I gotta know what I'm That's right. doing. That's right. So I. Don't get anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Podcast Podcast. Episode number 100 will be coming next. Oh, we got to think of something to do. We do got to think of something to do. I don't know what. I don't know. But we'll catch you on that one. Y'all be good. Well, well, well. It's another one in the books for the Cog Hill 40. Join us again next week for our next edition of the Cog Hill Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook. 
Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. 